a man is more willing to open up and be fully vulnerable with a woman who he knows as a full reservoir of respect. If respect is questioned, or you like, I don't know if she fully respects me, that's not happening. That's real. You're, you're not going to do it. That's his safety. Because you know there's a reservoir of that. Like I have no doubt or question about what standing I have in her mind. There's reverence there. She respects me. So I feel more comfortable bringing more of what I'm sharing. Even with that said, mm -hmm. I tend to have the belief that I don't think that a woman can handle everything. Welcome to Hardly Initiated, where real men talk real shit. Mm. It is your host, Tyshawn Jackson, here with another episode with my co-host, Ryan Ketchins. Listen, and today, we rocking with one of the realest. Yes. We're about to get a poppin', so I'm excited about this one. Real men only. We got a, mm. we, look, man. It's a safe space today. <laughs> it's a safe space for the brothers today. Facts. All right? We got a strong, prolific brother on the platform, on the platform here today. A powerful voice and somebody that has in, inspired me through the screen before I even, before he stepped foot in Harlem Initiated Studios oh, here. And blessed to have you finally here yeah. in person. It's about to get crazy, y'all. We rocking here with Lawrence Aja. Yeah, yeah. Good job. Good job on that. Grateful, 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 Tashan, Ryan, man, your entire squad, your people, Crystal, all everybody, everybody, man. I'm just thankful to be your presence. I was saying, man, even with y'all, man, I peeped y'all uh, a couple years ago. We could say a couple years, it's 2023 already. Yeah, right? yeah, so, <laughs> right, right. Two crazy. years. So salute to being faithful and and, and continuity. And consistent, but, baby. Um, but I was saying that was a breath of fresh air to one of the first uh, interviews that I caught you and six. Um, shout out to Sisters One of One. And uh, it was such a breath of fresh air of truth. And so it's just great to see brothers that brothers can respect, who are being intentional and deliberate about their life, um, who love other brothers, who affirm them and love our sisters, but want to create a space for truth to move things forward mm -hmm. in your life personally, but also for our people collectively. So thank you so much for having me, y'all. And that's, that, that, that was very important. You know, when we were even having a vision for this space, mm. we wanted a very honest space. Mm. We wanted a space where people could openly share their perspectives, regardless of what that may be. Mm. And I think the conversations we're having are probably some of the most important in our culture right now. Mm -hmm. And most importantly, we're having it with some of the most important people. Yes, you are. So when you bring really great conversations and really great people together, you know, it's a ripple effect of what that can do mm -hmm. in the culture. Because we have other people having great conversations and hopefully those people, you know, dive and have dive into depths that they have not mm -hmm. in their existing relationships <laughs> and um hopefully even find solutions mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. but i'm gonna be honest some of this stuff we're not gonna find a solution today hey you know hey. but it's worth <laughs> taking a stab at it and you i want to yeah. pop it off with some of your work yeah because you're doing some powerful work amongst men man yeah. shout out to you and Jay, y'all going around the entire country yeah. on a tour right now. Yeah. Just Heal, bro. Big shout out to them. Yeah. Bringing the men up. together. Only strong men on the line. <laughs> Only strong men. Every man on that damn platform yeah. I want to have on this show. Yeah. Because these are men that are doing really great work. Yeah. And yeah. Just, just speak to that. I want you to speak about what what it's like having the men like the feeling in the room mm -hmm. when you got a bunch of men in the room being mm -hmm. vulnerable because you know we don't like to be vulnerable mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like when you when you got us talking about i mean our our divorces our you know our our health issues our sex lives our sex lives mm -hmm. our mm -hmm. trauma all, all of that like mm -hmm. what is that what is that feeling like in a room with with those men First and foremost, again, thank you so much for having me, man. I, I, I have to give context and why Just Heal Bro, shout out to Jay Barnett. Um, again, it's, the, it's kind of the, 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 the brainchild, heart child of Jay Barnett and, and, and Hope Allen, who's my sister's a producer. And they really came together. It was a time when he was really envisioning how best, um, given his story of kind of being a two-time suicide survivor, um, former NFL, and uh, seemingly having amazing life but still struggling with things that I think many of us could identify mm. and recognizing that ultimately that that pain wasn't just for him that ultimately in that minish in that misery there was some ministry in it and that he could do something that would serve other people so he wrote the book the journal just heal bro and then from that birthed a a tour 
But part of the reason why it was so special for me is that, you know, part of my work, you know, I always say that the focus of my work is to help people establish and to strengthen their most important relationships with God, with people, and with themselves, mind and body. And a lot, one of that through lines was the issue of loneliness in the digital age. Uh, Facebook was started on my campus by my classmate. I was class in 2006. So on Harvard, I'm seeing literally the world changing and coming from this context of hospitality where my family didn't know anybody. We moved to Brooklyn, New York. My parents came from Nigeria in the late 70s. We moved to Piscataway, New Jersey. And they literally opened the door of our home and made everyone feel welcome. And we always had dinner as a family. That spurred on a movement of dinners around the world, 50,000 people, man, I'm hosting dinners. We got volunteers, 400 volunteers around, around the world, 40 cities. But primarily, of the people who really saw the need for relationships, you see it, it over-indexed for our sisters. There's about 65 to 70% sisters that would show up to these dinners of 400 to 500 people. Shout out Atlanta, you would have it here. We partnered with Live Nation. We did it in New York. We did it all wow. over the place. And so for me, I said, Lord, you've always put me in a position, and I'm thankful, to care for through my work to make sure that I'm, I'm, I'm able to uh, be a part of the caring village of sisters. I'm thankful for that. And I'm thankful for the rest of my life. Lord, you've trusted me with that. But I also, I'm an only son. I got three sisters, you know, but I'm like, I care about our brothers because I have great brothers around. And I also am a brother who's seeing what's happening in the world and seeing how if you're a brother, sometimes you feel like nobody gives a dang about how I feel and how I think. And so to your point of coming back into that room, you had George Floyd, you had so many things that were happening over the past couple of years. And brothers collectively, though, whether they said it or not, it was just like, man, we receive more respect and attention in death than we do in life. You know, that literally when we get talked about, whether it's even by our counterparts or by the world, we only matter to you when we are a springboard to your career to talk about activism or you, we are an example of maybe systematic issues or we're an example of perhaps what's wrong with our community. Right. And so brothers at some point was like, bro, I need a space. And so what's beautiful about Just Heal, bro, is a, is a time where brothers are informed, number one, informed about the reality of what all of us are collectively going through. I think in every story, there's some sort of self-identification. Facts. Which is why every story, there's always a under God story, meaning that not everybody could relate to somebody really being succeeding and being wealthy, but everybody could relate to everybody in the hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so the fact is you have brothers at the top of their game, but across so many different verticals of life, mm -hmm. right? And so somebody in the room is going to be able to self-identify with, with some part of what somebody's sharing. And they just share their stories, kind of like, yo, this is what it was. This is what I thought it was. And they, everybody brings up some sort of lie that they believed that we realized life showed you. For me, it was just like, man, I could achieve my way to happiness, man. Like that, you know what, that uh, I could achieve enough. And I'm just like, man, my, my relationships matter more than my achievements. And so still when I was achieving, but my boy died and I'm achieving, but I'm, 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 I still feel like I'm lacking peace. I'm achieving. I did everything that I was supposed to do. I went to the best schools. I was like, man, I'm a national champion, all American track and field, doing all these different things. But, some, but something was off. People are like, man, you have this professional athlete, you have this person, you have this uh, top pastor, you have this actor, you have this. All of them who are solid cats are dealing with something. Yo, listen, podcasting change our life and it can change yours too. You don't have to have a bunch of money. You don't got to spend thousands of dollars in equipment or thousands of dollars on guests. All you need to do is have that burning desire, a strategy, and a game plan. And listen, that's what we're going to bring to you. This Sunday, we having a free workshop for any podcaster that wants to grow, monetize, and scale their platform, you need to make sure you're at our workshop. We put the link for you in the bio. So click it. Make sure you're there. It's at 8 p.m. We going in. See you on Sunday. Mm -hmm. So there's information. I also say instigation. At some point then, you know, like I think the, the reality is that uh, brothers don't have the tools to be able to be honest about the things that they're dealing with. Uh, it will say like, it's not just about like mental health. It's like, yo, it's not about, oh, being so emotional. It's about men. How do, what do I do? How do I process my emotions? Right. I will say like brothers and sisters don't process emotions the same. God has not ordered us that way. However, I give a perfect example. My sister, my oldest sister had a blood clot in her brain uh, two years ago. It was the scariest thing. They thought she was going to pass away. And, you know, have my niece and all that stuff like that. And my dad, my, my, my mom, my sisters are losing their mind, right? You know what I'm saying? And it's my dad and I, and I'm in the room. This is COVID time. And I'm seeing my sister locked, uh, you know, got her brain 
you know, like, you know, tied to the EKG, all the stuff like that. Her eyes rolled in the back of her head, sedated. And I'm like, right now I'm seeing every single person in the community of our family around there losing their mind. If I break down right now, all hell's breaking loose. I still need to be able to talk to the doctor to assess what's going on, what's the best thing. I still need to be able to inform people who are blowing up our phone and our family how they could best support us and all that stuff like that. This doesn't mean that I don't need to uh, process my emotion, but I may may not be able to do it here. And so I was able to do it at the side of the road in Philly by Thomas Jefferson and pray and, and, and scream in the hole and, and, and cry out, get all that stuff out. And then I come back in a room solid because I'm like, that's my role in this, right? Again, brothers know that where they're like, I got families, I got stuff. If I break down here, so part of it is like, how do I actually have the tools? What does it look like for me to process and work through my emotions? How do, how do I feel? These are some tools. Again, this is not a therapy session, but it's like, what are the tools and practical ways for me to navigate life as a man? So, so let me let, let me actually ask you that because man, yeah. we was just having that conversation here not too long ago. Forrest Gump, not not Forrest Gump, but uh, <laughs> Saving Private Ryan, Ryan mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So, actually, I wasn't gonna go there, but that's actually a great story. Look, I, I'll quickly preface yeah. it with that story. Mm-hmm. Love the movie Saving Private oh, yeah. Ryan. Tom Hanks killed it. Mm-hmm. Two brothers are missing. These the, this platoon <clears throat> is called on this death mission to go find these brothers who they don't even know if they're alive or not. <laughs> so the platoon is already pissed that they got to do this mission. But Tom Hanks, who's leading it, like, I don't give a damn. We got to go do it. And he sends them on this mission. And he internally knows it's not a good idea. It's, it's not a good mission. idea. He even <laughs> fought the captain when they was even trying to give it to him at first. Mm-hmm. The, these brothers end up going on this mission, mm-hmm. right? And they're going through all of these crazy, you know, different uh, scenarios mm-hmm. to eventually find this location where these brothers might be. They don't even know if they're alive. Mm-hmm. And this is one portion where it's this battlefield. There's like dead bodies around. They could tell, they don't know if it's mines, they don't know if it's snipers, but they know this is not a safe place to go. Mm-hmm. The guys are like, yo, I think we need to go around. We don't, he's like, look, nah, where we need to go, the compass, we need to go that way. Mm-hmm. They like, look, I get it. Look, <laughs> right, private, right, listen, right, right, let's right. go around. Hey, hey, this right. shit ain't looking good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he's like, nah, listen, we're gonna book it. Yeah, yeah. They ended up going, and they go across, two of his men get killed. Mm-hmm. So it's a moment where it's this very emotional moment where one, as a leader in that situation, mm-hmm. his men now that survive are really like, you could tell like it's like a very solid moment where they kind of side-eye him and you could tell on the inside they're questioning his leadership mm-hmm. and that decision because he lost two men off that. Mm-hmm. And also him as a leader, he's also emotionally connected mm-hmm. to his men. Mm-hmm. He, there's this scene where he literally goes off behind this rock. Mm-hmm. He cries his eyes out like a hard ass cry. Mm-hmm. It's a hard, fast cry, though. Mm-hmm. Like, he probably cried for all but about 15 seconds, wiped his tears, blew the snot out of his nose, wiped it all on his gear, got up, went to his men, and said, all right, let's go. Mm-hmm. And nobody saw him break down. Mm-hmm. Nobody saw what, 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 what happened behind mm-hmm. that boulder mm-hmm. because he got to be sharp for his people. Mm-hmm. And I think that's like the story of being a man, right? And I actually mm-hmm. think the story is even worse because I don't even think men are going behind that boulder and even having that moment. It, mm-hmm. So I want to talk about that because... What, how should we be processing our emotions? Because to be honest with you, I can't remember the last time I cried mm. and I got a lot of shit to cry about. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so considering that, what does a healthy way look like? Knowing that we have people watching us, we, we in leadership roles and positions and ideally we should not, I don't care what nobody say, we, it's moments we just can't be breaking down in front of people that we lead. Yeah. So what's the right way to do it? Yeah, and, and I, I, I really want to be very clear, man. I am not saying that suppression of your emotions is the manly thing to do. I think I want to be clear because people get clips and they don't hear it. I do think, I, I, I'm going to be systematic about the, that your answer, man. Number one, I think we have to start with a foundation, number one, that men and women are different. I think is divine. I think how we process is different and there's a beauty in that. And because often you'll hear conversations about what does it look like for you to process? But the standard in the back of their mind is how a woman processes, right? To say, if I don't emote, then he's not emotionally available. If I don't speak in this way, he's not. It's like, no, 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 no. So that's number one. Number two, the question is also the, the why. The, the scripture talks about like, I'm like a wineskin ready to burst, Job. And I think the reality is that no matter who you are, you have to find an outlet for what you're feeling. You know, they, uh, you know, I, I was big on, um, I'm like a Bob V, like my dad was an architect, so I like building stuff, wood, Home Depot, all that. But also I got into like plants and like big tropical plants. 
uh, Monstera Deliciosa. Shout out to the people who know what that is. <laughs> and so <laughs> these things go up like sometimes 30 feet. And I had this like really high ceilings in Jersey City. And uh, my thing was like 12 feet up in the air. And I got a new, you know, new, new vase, you know, new joint. I could put it in, man. I had that joint right, man. So I'm watering every day. I'm doing it. One of us going around. And I'm going to the edge of my, 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 my living room area. I'm smelling a little. Thing ain't smelling right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm smelling, you know, something, something wrong. The soil is off and da, da, da. And when you run, if you know what plants, most of those vases, typically there's a hole in it. There's like a drain. Yeah. Right? <clears throat> Which ultimately allows you to, the water to come through and drain. If you don't allow the water to drain, it just sits. And water that sits and it is not moving, still water, like, turns, like, <laughs> like, like bad, right? Gotcha. It, it, like, it becomes rank. Right. And it's just like it wasn't because there's issue with the water. The issue of the water was not moving. Right. It was not flowing through the soil. And I think similarly, when it comes to our emotions, the issue is that the emotions are not bad. It's like, but if you're not letting it process and move through, if it's just sitting there and you just don't do anything with it, that's what destroys you. Right. And so I think for brothers, what does it look like? I think if anything, I always talk about there's three relationships that your brother needs. You need cover, you know, a brother that is further along in life than you that you respect that you could look up to, that you give right to correct you and, and speak life into you. You need counsel, people that you make decisions with, you know, for lack of counsel, a plans fail, that you make this like, hey, yo, I'm about to marry it. Hey, bro, I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't that. know about you that know? one. And then lastly is care. Care is often people sometimes default that to the significant other, a place where you kind of unload, <laughs> dump, right? But I think brothers, you realize when if you live long enough, right, even the people who care the most about you, there's very few places where you have empathy. And uh, you need two at a minimum. One, at least you have your therapist, you have brothers and stuff you could speak to. And I would say, especially for brothers, at a minimum, finding it with your friends, being able to say, I get to speak to you about what I'm going about, what I'm, what I'm going through and sharing that with you. Number two, even your friends, your boys, it's almost like if you start in a business and you, you're talking to somebody, you have this great idea and you're like, yeah, I'm about to build all this and they give you that 45 degree face. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. you know what right. I mean? Like, I'm like, you don't understand. Like you want people to validate you. Even your closest boy, even if you're going through something, they may not fully understand, right? And so even when that fails, that has a, its, its capacity. Then I think, for, I think often that's also an invitation for people to, if it's not from the counselor, therapist, where you could speak unabashed, one of your boys, that's going to take a percentage, a percentage. And then that's where you go vertical, man. I think you got to have a place where you can go and speak to someone that you know who knows everything and, you, and who actually can understand you and you feel like you're fully, fully heard. And when you say that, you mean like that you can even potentially cry with. Yeah, brother. Like, I, and, and that's why I say like whatever it looks like for you, it just needs to look like something. I say this with grief, right? Everybody grieves differently. How they process differently, but you just need to have a process, right? And so too often, most people do nothing. And they act like, I'm just getting back to work. You know, Andy Reid lost his son. He's, he's back to work. He was back at the OTA. Who's that? You know, Andy, Andy Reid. You know, Kansas said he lost his, his son a couple years ago. And that's when grief explodes on grief you. Grief explodes. But often people don't address it. They act like it never exists. It's like putting the, the clothes under the bed. I'm going to act like this don't exist. And I'm going to just go back to this because it's, it's, like, it's, like, it's like I'm going into a, a pool that's infinitely deep. I don't know if I'm going to come back up. So you act like it doesn't exist. So you don't know what you're going to do with it. That is why it's helpful to go into counseling to do so. But if you're not there yet, at a minimum, I often think that we underutilize our brothers because we often exist in a world where no one gives a dang or even often cares seemingly about brothers. And I'm saying this not even as a knock to our sisters because our sisters hold us down. I love, at, like, I love our sisters. But there are also limits to what they can understand because they're not men. And so sometimes the limits to what they can understand is I can hear you all up to the point to where you now are blaming me for something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. The minute that I feel like you're, you, I'm the cause of your pain, I can't hear you anymore. And so brothers say, other brothers. You, we were talking even before all this. Half of the conversations, we even starting the conversation, we already know where we're going because we understand. And there's something about brothers who just get it. You, you know what I'm saying? Get it. Exactly. You just feel relieved, man. Like, oh, no, you too? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so if I can get on the phone and be like, yo, brother, like, Yo, and you know somebody, like, you know, whether you know somebody who lost a, a brother or lost somebody or I'm grieving because of this, I'm scared I'm going to lose my job, or shoot, there's brothers who are dealing with stuff like, I feel impotent as a man because I don't have a job. You know what I'm saying? If another brother knows what you're feeling like but has navigated that and you just get able to just talk to him, that's invaluable. And so I think even with the tour, when you hear the stories of brothers that you're looking up to, 
that they're telling you different parts of the journey. It's like, man, like just me getting it out. That's something. So specifically back to your, your, your question, what does it look like? Here's, here's I think, a, a very in, in, in implicit point. You can't do it alone. But, it, but you have to start to a place where you at least process it, whether you start with a Jesse LeBron journal, write it, scream it out in the early in the morning, in your quiet time, I do quiet time, man. I wake up, before I look at anything, before I talk to anyone, I'm letting somebody talk to me. And so I'm like, I go to my word, and then after I kind of process it, I meditate, and then I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with what I'm feeling. On top of that, brothers often already do it, but it's not intentional. The gym, man. The gym, I always say that my morning run is my morning coffee, man. I was an athlete. Like, anybody knows that? Like, moving that iron around. You got to get it. Woo. Like, that iron run. If you're intentional to say, I need a release for what I'm feeling, I'm part of my run is I make decisions. I think about what's going on, right, yep. after I'm journaling and all that. So whatever that practice is, you need to have something. I'm, and I'm, I'm trying to say this in the most universal way for people. Brother, you need to have something where you're intentionally dealing with whatever you're experiencing, right? And so I give it like the similar guidance I give to people when in a grieving. I say 30 days is like the model in Deuteronomy when they were mourning Moses passing away. I said 30 days. They gave 30 days. So whatever it is every day, even if it's 15 minutes, just to acknowledge the pain that you're feeling, whatever that looks like for you. You have to. I think men who don't have hobbies, they just are generally men Ooh. are not in control. Ooh. Because if, if you have a hobby, that means you are have to intentionally take control of your day. You got to make time for it. You got to be committed to it. And you truly respect the effects that it has on you. Mm. But the men who don't have hobbies, they're just really just going through the day at the mercy of really, typically it's going to be a corporation. Yeah. I always, I always say like we got to use, it's almost like, a, what is it, kind of like a martial arts stuff, like you use the other person's force against them. <laughs> you know, yeah, you've yeah, heard it. Exactly yeah. Right. Well, it's almost like there's a force within every man, meaning that we typically are very pragmatic, very utilitarian, but also men need mission. We need purpose. It don't matter what it is. Right. And so in your mind, if you can codify to say, what is my mission? What is my goal in this? My goal is that um, when I even talk about grief and talk about things you're processing, I'm saying like, yo, if you break your leg, that first moment of setting that thing in place is important even before the PT. Right. And so even that dedicated time for you to be still <laughs> and you to cast this thing up is critical because if you don't get that setting right, no matter what you do afterwards, you're going to be walking with a real limp. It ain't going to grow right. right. <laughs> this is what grief processing is. This is what processing your emotions is. If you can ignore it. Ignore it if you want. Fine. But that foundation is going to be off. And it's going to be showing up in how you walk. Right? And so I think it's, it's, it's one of those things where I'm just like, you have, to, you have to set, you have to have a dedicated point where you're like, I'm going to do something. I'm going to be still. I'm going to acknowledge what I'm feeling, what I'm experiencing. It's going to look like something for me. And I'm going to do that for a dedicated time. And then over time, hopefully, it gets better. And here's the thing. Not everything is not everything we will resolve on this side of glory, man. Like, there's certain things where I said, like, if, you, if your heart works, your heart will be broken by a lot of stuff that happens in life. Life lives, man. Life lives. And I think that it's also unrealistic to believe that I'll never be the same. I'm like, no. If I lose my, 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 my boy or my guy, yeah, I'm, I will never be the same. But it doesn't mean that I won't have a joy. It doesn't mean that. I mean, that's mean that no, that tells you that my heart works. That means that that person had a really big impact on my life, and that I'm not going to be the same because because of what I learned, all the game he gave me. Because I'm going to live a certain way, right. but also because because that person's not here, it inevitably is going to shift how my life is because there's no, we don't have that interaction. So my hope is that at the end of the day, you have something. You either have a personal relationship with a brother that you could unload with. You have personal time for yourself in the morning, once, whatever, where you process awake, maybe your workout time. Some people, when they talk about prayer, some people do it in the car. Whatever it is for you, have dedicated time to at least confront that. And if you feel like I'm overwhelmed, I don't even know, I'm afraid of it, that's where counseling and therapists and people who are gifted to walk you through it could help you out with. Man, and, you know, and now that I think about it, it's kind of crazy. I, <laughs> I don't even know if I've even had conversations. Like, you know, me... When I feel emotion, when I'm, if I'm being very honest with myself, because mm. I was reflecting on it as you were talking mm. about this, as soon as I feel emotion and more, and more, more specifically sadness, because mm. I think that's one of the most vulnerable emotions right. for men. Yeah, so that's like the is toughest easy. one. Yeah. yeah, excitement, you know, being happy, <laughs> you know, anger even is like you know, you'll let it, you know, even anger, you know, I could, I could, I could, t I could pro process that, but sadness, that shit. 
I nip that shit in the butt quickly. Very quickly. Mm. So like if I feel that shit, it's like feel. Mm. That shit stops in mm. an instant. I don't even let myself feel that shit. Mm. It's like mm. I don't even know why. It's like I don't I, matter if I matter if I actually I do know why. I think mentally I just associate that with weakness. Mm -hmm. And I, honestly, I don't think I know how to prob to, to like really let that shit let it run. Yeah. Like honestly, I don't to be honest with you, I don't like the process of crying. Mm-hmm. I don't even like the process of it. It just feels like like I'm throwing up. See, so, <laughs> like it feels okay, so, like emotionally, like mm -hmm. like this this thing is just coming out of me. Coming like what's what's happening right now? Yeah. It's like it's just like some shit is being pulled out of me. Yeah. It feels horrible, and I ju I just really my body and, and mind doesn't know how to process that the right way. So therefore, I don't really know how to let that flow happen that you describe that you yeah. describe. So I know. I I know I'm fucked up in ways. Well, man, we, so, we are. When, when it comes to crying, like for me personally, when it comes, I don't really have very many. Um, and I consider myself an emotional emotional yeah. being. I don't really have moments where I feel like I have to cry. Like I don't think that has happened in yeah. like a very long time. But what I do have, like, is like this. It's not even the moments. It's like this, just these spurts mm -hmm. where it's not to the point where I want to cry, but I mean I am sad. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is, you know, I might be. Let's say I wake up in the morning, I don't work out. Mm -hmm. I don't read the Quran or I don't, you know, take mm -hmm. a look at my Bible. I don't do any, I don't do mm -hmm. any spiritual reading, don't work out. And then let's say I didn't plan the night before. Mm -hmm. So I'll find myself, I might just be watching TV, right? Mm -hmm. But I'll realize somewhere while I'm watching the episodes, I'm like, wait a minute, I'm, I'm actually watching TV because I'm sad. Mm -hmm. I'm watching TV mm -hmm. because I didn't do what the hell I knew I need. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think that's the sadness that the average person experiences regularly. Ooh. Because you sad for four hours this day, two hours this day, a whole Sunday, yeah. <laughs> yeah. right? And then the, it compounds over time. Yeah. And it's really, and you're really sad because you just literally are not taking action. And, and, it's like a, and, and I think those emotions also, cause like it's, then you start mixing sadness with disappointment. Mm -hmm. Then it's yeah. a little shame, mm -hmm. you know, then the, like then these emotions kind of pile up. And that's when, that's when now you in depression. Like yeah. right. you, rolling, you on your way to absolute depression now. Cause you just not dealing with this, this pile of shit on your back Yeah, that has, you know, that you just, like you said, you're just absolutely avoiding it, acting like it don't exist. Yeah, I, I think, man, really, really, really appreciate how you said that, man. I think it's coping, right? You're coping, right? And, and these are coping mechanisms, mm -hmm. right? But one of the things that I, I we started even the conversation, just just showing so much respect and love to what you're doing with this uh, with this platform, these conversations about truth. Truth is undefeated. Truth is timeless. You can't escape the truth. We can't handle it, but we can't escape it. And to sit still long enough to even confront, like, why am I really doing this? Very people even get to that, to get to the truth of why it is, because this is often pleasure seeking. It covers us, but I think the point is that, like, the the truth is because I, I I think there's nuance in this. The truth is is that there's nothing, though culture I think tells us sometimes that shame, or feeling bad, or sadness, or not being happy is bad. No, staying there is. Right, that there's nothing unhealthy about you have a full range of emotions. You shouldn't be happy all the time. You're not going to be, right? Think about it. If that was my guy, or if my team lost, or if like we wanted this deal and it didn't work out, or shoot, we lost this and our our business closed and I got to lay off all these people, you should be sad if you care about them, right? But if you just muffle that, it's like it's like it's like it's very unnatural. But I think part of the, the part of the thing is that we've been told that those are not healthy emotions. The point is, is that our, I think deeply for many people's fear, the fear that we're not going to come back out of it, right? And, right. And, 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 and I think this is why, and I give so much love to the clinicians. You know, for me, it's pastoral. It's a pastoral counseling. It's, it's, it's that from that perspective. But I give so much love to people who help people who are afraid. I don't know if I go there, <laughs> I'm going to come back out. So for a natural coping mechanism is to, I'm not even going to go there, which is natural. Like, it's like, Hey, I, 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 you know, close the door. Yeah, yep. <laughs> Close the door, fam. <laughs> see we don't want to deal with that right now. I don't got time. You know what I mean? Yo, I, I think everybody in the universe is going to understand this, man. Everybody been broke at some point. <laughs> right? Right, right? Yo, I remember that time you broke, fam. I wouldn't even want to get, like, I would take money out of the ATM and cover the thing so I don't see my balance. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
Brothers and sisters, no. You know what I'm saying? Like, you get the alert from Chase. You're like, I don't want to see it. A low balance alert. Like, I don't want to see it. Right. Like, when it's something you have an unhealthy relationship with, you, you try to act like it doesn't exist. Yeah. And so I think similarly, when it comes to uh, sadness, when it comes to like, man, I'm disappointment, frustration, it, it's like, oh, man, that's, it's going to get to the person. It can. Right. But a lot of it is because it's just like, man, I, I just I'm afraid I won't come back out. And the thing is that it's healthy. Think about even if you read if, if, from our brothers and sisters of the faith, you know, if you read so much of the Psalms, this is David complaining. <laughs> he's sad. He's pissed. He's sad. He's, he's contrite. He's broken in spirit. Like God says, like, I accept a broken and contrite heart and spirit. Like, that's normal. And then you see a crescendo. Then you see the phoenix. And then you see kind of like the, the viewpoint of like, okay, God, you're with me. I know that you're, you're, you lie down with me, sleep. I wake again. You're with me. You sustain me. Like, but he shows that his frustration, his sadness, his worry, his grief, that is the full view of a man, full view of a woman, a full view of humanity. If you don't have the full view of that, you're not, you're, you're, you're not letting your heart fully function. Right? And so I think, again, it takes a lifetime because not everybody starts at the same place. Not all of us have experienced the same stuff. Right? Right. If I kind of was a fly on your wall from the time that you were born and, and saw everything that you saw, people would understand. Right? That's why often for people, faith is liberation to do it because you're like, I know somebody who knows everything that I've gone through. They know every reason why I'm like this because for me it was survival because of what I saw. And I didn't have time to sit here and cry. I had to get up out. Or I didn't get up and go to work, mm. right? And so I have a lot of compassion for people who struggle with it. But I think that we're all struggling with something. But I do believe there's a better way to live, which allows you to be expressive, not meaning that you're going to do it at the same time or that you will cry at the same time. That's not the key. Or My point is just whatever you got, don't let that be still water. Just let it flow, man. Do you recommend a man cry in front of his 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 like family or his his wife, or do you think he needs to he needs to do that in private? Uh, I, so this may be a bit controversial. My thing is, that I think be true, and I also think it's dependent on a number of factors. What your relationship is and standing in that relationship, you know, as much as you hear the conversation about women feeling safe, which I think is a valid conversation, there's something about what it means for a man to feel safe. And I had a conversation. Um, I was on a panel a couple uh, a couple weeks ago, and I said, you know. A man is more willing to open up and be fully vulnerable with a woman who he knows as a full reservoir of respect. If respect is questioned, or you like, I don't know if she fully respects me, that's not happening. That's real. You're, you're not going to do it. That's his safety. Because you know there's a reservoir of that. Like I have no doubt or question about what standing I have in her mind. There's reverence there. She respects me. So I feel more comfortable bringing more of what I'm sharing. Even with that said, mm-hmm. I tend to have the belief that I don't think that a woman can handle everything, right? Um, and I'm not, this is not a knock. I think people will hear this. Jesus even said, like, there's so, much I want th- so many things I want to tell you, but you can't, it, it, it's right, it right. There's so many things I want to tell you, but now is not the time. A scripture. Meaning that even he was discerning about what he shared and when and with who. Exactly. Right? And so I think if that was the, co- st- the case with Jesus, then I think how much more should be the case with us to say, you know what? We should be on the same page around the things I think are relevant and as, I, as we get to in a place of establishment of comfort, I should share things that are relevant to us, our marriage, and this. But there are certain things that only is gonna, me and God have. Women themselves have journals, many of them do, that is only between them and God. Yep. They don't share everything with you. That's a fact. So there's, you know, again, in line with, I think there's course correction, but sometimes in a course correction, sometimes we go to extremes of like men need to be expressed because there's been a, just a, a, a suppression naturally of being, we gotta be stoic, we gotta be this. And I think sometimes we're, we're naturally designed that way. I believe that to be more stoic uh, because of what God has called us to in terms of leadership in community, in society, in our homes. But I think sometimes the idea is like, you need to express like me and look like me. I'm like, no, 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 no. Um, I, I, I think I need to be discerning just as a woman is discerning about what I share. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not holding any secrets, but there's certain things that only God can handle. And the reality is that there's certain things that you can't handle, even though you say you think you can. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Right. And I think there's a number of brothers, obviously not from just a place of pain, who have seen it, you know, on an unhealthy side flipped around <laughs> oh, <laughs> and yeah. be like, wait, wait, whoa, <laughs> time 22nd. You know what I'm saying? Like, how did this come back to me? <laughs> Right? And that can leave you in a bad spot And that can leave term. you, and again, you're responsible for that. Don't hold another sister accountable for what this other sister did. But I do think that women often, uh, uh, women and men, that you can't handle everything, mm-hmm. right? And I think that sounds like, a, a, a that's not dismissive. It's just to say even Jesus himself was thoughtful about what we could handle and mindful. 
And I'm not saying keep secrets. What I'm saying is that um, I give this example, uh, this joke I always I share on the tour often. <laughs> I talk about, I call it sorcery. I said, have you ever, how, how many brothers have ever, you know, had uh, been in an argument with, uh, with your significant other and everybody raised their hand? And I said, let's say, for example, there was an issue or something that you noticed. You actually took the time to think through what you're about to say, to be very gentle, to be very concise, to be clear, to not be attacking, to be talk to the issue, and you bring it up to her. And how many have been in the situation where it started off that you're talking about this, and then before you know it, you're talking about how what you said made her feel, and then it becomes about not about what you're saying and how it made you feel. It becomes about what you said to her and how it makes her feel and how she's upset with you about how you said it. And you're like, I came here to talk about how I'm in pain, <laughs> and now it's talking about you. It's centering you because, again, often for many people, it's just like I just – it feels, I feel like I'm being attacked. It feels like I'm being blamed. The defensiveness comes up. And again, I don't want brothers to be dissuaded of being open because they think that me being open means I got to share it with her. I think that's why brothers need to have a faith life. Wow. Because there's certain things that only God can handle. I, I completely agree with that. I, um, man, you got me thinking about so many things. Now, you talked about the truth. Yeah. So I want to talk about the sad truth. Woo. And, I, and uh, <laughs> you know, I had a, one of my best friends come over early this week. Uh, actually, it was, it was last week. And uh, he came over to tell me that, you know, he, him and his wife are getting ready to have a baby, right? Mm. So, you know, it was, we celebrated, you know, we had a good conversation. And uh, on his way out, mm -hmm. we were just talking about, you know, the, the bros, yeah. right? So... I was like, yo, how's this bro doing? How's that bro doing? And he was just, you know, telling me about some things. And he just mentioned, he said, man, you know what? I need to take a break from the bros. <laughs> I'm like, why? He was like, man, you know, the last time I was with the bros, he was like, it was all together. It's about 10 of us. And he's like, everybody want to talk about all these women they have, they have any sexual relations with. Mm. And I'm laughing. And I'm like, bro, come on. I'm like, bro, you know the bros. How the bros are. They yeah. want to show, show off and this mm -hmm. and that. Mm -hmm. He said, but that's not what they're doing. <laughs> and I looked at him. I said, bro, you, you got a whole wife. Why the mm -hmm. hell you care about what they doing or what they say they doing? Mm -hmm. And he was like, bro, because it's not real. Mm -hmm. And I was like, but that's just what, that, my response was, but that's just what guys do sometimes, mm -hmm. right? And he was like, bro, he was like, look, I'm not even going to have this conversation with you. We're going to pick it up, right? Yeah. So it's been a week since this, this conversation. Now, yesterday I was online, you know, and I'm looking at these different uh, things on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And it was a post about this lady. Uh, it was like one of these podcasts, right? Yeah. And this lady basically <laughs> says like to this guy, Oh, you don't know that it's a bunch of men who have penis pumps and mm. penis implants? Mm. And I don't know why, but I was just very curious. I had never heard of that before. Mm. So I go and I go and I start Googling penis implants. And I see that it's two types of penis implants. <laughs> and I see how popular they are. <laughs> and I see how I'm sorry, you messed your whole algorithm up. Now you put the search. <laughs> no. Now you go, your ad get your ad game is gonna be messed up. Tashawn knows my brain gets caught on something I yeah, never yeah, heard yeah. of something. I want to see where it's, I want to see what it's about. <laughs> yeah. So I'm looking do. So I'm looking at this, right? And I'm thinking, why would somebody need a penis implant? That's what oh, I'm thinking. Oh yeah, we could rock. And literally, it's only one reason. It's erectile dysfunction. Mm -hmm. And now, as soon as I seen that, I started to understand what he meant. Mm -hmm. That's not real, which you got these 10 guys talking about how much success they having with these women when they got product after product after product targeting 20 to 30 year olds who have erectile dysfunction. Mm -hmm. So what they really need to be talking about <laughs> is how to keep their meat erect <laughs> When they get a woman. So I get what he was saying. Mm -hmm. is it wasn't real. Yeah. So I actually want to talk to you about that because yeah. what's put out in the media is that men are so promiscuous mm -hmm. and men are doing all of these different things and men are sluts or mm -hmm. hoes and all these different things. But what's really happening is that men are really having problems with women in the, of the sexual variety. Mm. So... What like it, are you seeing that with the men that you speak to that you help? Are they having just having issues? And, and and if they are, is it mental? Is it physical? Like where does that even come from? It's both and all, man. I I'm so thankful that you brought this up, man. There's even a step before that, man. Brothers in society, men here, explicitly or implicitly, that you're only as good as what you could produce. You're as best. Your performance is where you get your value. If you're not doing nothing. 
you ain't worth nothing, right? And so it's performance in anything. Performance in terms of your money. Do you bring in money? Performance in terms of your girl. Does she look fly? Performance in terms of even your marriage bed is a place of performance. And that should be a place of release and connection and wow. all that. But in the back of your mind, you think, if I ain't really laying it down the way I need to, then, uh, you know, she's looking at me. So, like, every place for a man is this place of the performance. And so, again, that's just where you have brothers, our suicide rates double all that. When you feel, like, impotent, you feel like you're not producing relative to what you see on Instagram and what they say they want. And so, shoot, the validation I get from women, they say they want men like this, who are making this type of money, who look like this. Shoot, I can't even control how tall I am. I right. can't control how long this is. I can't control how they, I can't control, the, the, shoot, I can't get the rate. Uh. And so, again, if your existence and your view of your value is something that you perform, right, which is people's transition from career, ending and retiring from professional sports, they, they lose their mind because of identity. Who am I if I'm not producing and people are saying I'm a good, I'm good. Oh, you the man. So that precedes it. So think about that. That, that, that infiltrates every area of someone's life. Now, think about sex. We talked about this a little bit, man. Like, peep, man, we need, this is wake up, four alarm blaze, SOS, put the bat signal out, right? Where we have a whole generation that is dealing with, number one, social media in ways that we didn't, Right. right? Information influx, right? So you have people, just the amount of information that anyone is taking in is just beyond, I think, hum our human capacity, what we're made to take in. On top of that pornography, access to it is easy. I remember back in the day, I'm being real, man. Like back in the day, you had to get a magazine or, right, people were like, like turning to channel 69. Channel 7, 99. And, like, channel trying to, and like they were trying to turn it to see if they see something, right? It was hard. There was higher barriers right. to access. Now you can get it. From your, from just, you could just type it in and there's no barriers. And so I think for people, even leaving to the experts, but I think people understand this base understanding of like, it, 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 it literally rewires your brain. And so you have brothers, especially in their formative time, whether they're in puberty or not, looking at all these things. And there's a whole neurological loop happening to say what is like, again, it's like the cocaine response. It's like, what is actually going to excite me? What's exciting me? And let's say you overload those receptors beyond what you were designed to even take. To say every day I'm looking at something or something more intense, more, more intense, more intense, and I could watch it all night. On top of that, I'm also on social media, even if I'm not looking at it, social media itself, Instagram is soft porn anyway. Absolutely. Right? If most of these cats, they're just following fitness influencers and they're out there doing and the stuff. And it ain't for fitness. And, and it ain't for fitness, they don't man. Do a damn like, all the tights is all that, you know what I'm saying? So that's soft porn to begin with. And on top of that, even if you're going in um, innocently, what you get from likes, that dopamine response. That all works on your dopamine receptors. And so all the things that allow you to actually desire human interaction and respond to human stimulus when you're by a woman or where you're by friends, where you're around people to be happy, now that receptor's off. People understand that the analog is like drinking coffee and you drink a little bit of coffee and now you need more coffee to get to that level of, of, of awakeness. You have that. So now when they're experimenting, now when they're going out and the society's telling you you need to perform, they're experimenting. They're now having sexual interactions with women, and now they can't. But at another level, that's not natural. Not like, oh, it's just a bad night. or No, 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 no. I can't. You, that's an elixir. And so now what is the response? The drugs that people are taking, right? And or the drug of the conquest that I get from doing it. Mm. So what you talk about, which is, shoot, look at the height they're getting. Talking about all the women that they're rocking through. One, I'm getting the value and validation that I'm a man. I'm somebody. I've also conquered. And so uh, for a woman to like you and to rock with you and to desire you in that way, ooh, mm -hmm. that's, that's something. Right, right. right. But on top of that as well, it, it does. I know other cats are struggling with this, and I know I'm the best. It's not just, think about it. Why do we people flex on the gram? It's just like, look what I got. Yeah, you know I mean, cats will go, it don't matter. Everybody want to be the man of their block. Yep. It don't matter if the smallest block on earth, man. You know what I mean? Like, shoot, look at, look, look at, look at the speakers. I'm blasting that joint. You know what I'm saying? Look at who, look at me. Look at me. Look at John right. Ryan. Right. Flashing somebody else's gun. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, know, you know what I'm saying? So think about, but, but, but if, if, if you kind of peel it back a bit more, it's just like, think about the links we get, right? As Memphis, for lack of a better word, I am a man. We, we wrote that, you know, like I am a man. Just, I, it just the basically, we want to affirm that we're somebody mm. because we were made to, because we are somebody in the image of God. And when you have a society that systematically has stripped you from it, 
you have a movement socially that kind of undermines your value, whether in even in the household, you as a father, you in relationship, you in society. Even look when you have the political conversations. I remember the past years, I was frustrated when I turned on the news and the political conversations. I'm like, where are the black men? The black men in no conversation. But then we're going to get blamed for the 2% difference of voting. between. It's just like, and so when you have all of that, you are now going to take extreme measures to assert that I am somebody. Mm. Whether it means at the expense of a woman, or that means at the false measure of I'm going to overwork because right. I don't know if I'm not doing this, who am I? At the expense of my family where I got all the money and my kids are taken care of, but they don't know me, right? What lengths are you going to go to show that I'm somebody? And I think, again, this is why these conversations, Just Healing Brothers, because, again, how could we, who could articulate in a way that's not attacking? Right. You know what I'm saying? Where you're like, yo, I didn't know that. Because, again, you don't know. You don't know in the moment. I don't know that's what it was. Right? I was talking to this brother who his wife was like, I'm really concerned about him. Like, we have enough to retire, right? Couple, 30 years married, having some issues, and walking with him for the past year and a half. And, like, what came down to is just like, he don't know. He's like, I don't know who I am if I'm not doing this. Like, he's just like, you know, like, there was so many accolades. Like, who, who am I? How do I, who do I introduce myself as? And my booth, I said, you know, in the same way I always talk about in Genesis of God uh, with a word can create the whole world. You think that God can't do it again in your life. Mm. So you hold on. This is what we call it the Barbershop Hall of Fame. <laughs> the Barbershop, everybody in the Barbershop Hall of Fame was like, could have went to league. Could have yeah. did this. <laughs> you know, I could have went to league. everything. Oh, yeah, that was me, man, man. Oh, yeah, man, this. Earl the Pearl, man. I, I used to do this on the block. You know, like, because... I'm holding on to that. That was a point of significance. And the fact, if you're holding on so tightly, that means that you have very little confidence that you could recreate anything new. And so I think even for many brothers, it's just like, man, like I'm holding on to that because that was significance. And I don't think I could produce something. Nothing new can come from me, right? And it's like, man, see, look at, do you perceive it? I'm doing a new thing. And I pray that brothers could hear that to say, oh, you could do a new thing. You don't have to just knock down these women to be valuable, right? You know, whether that's your theology, whether that's your perspective, you know, think about how fickle that is. Imagine what's what's even better is being able to sit back and say, no matter what the rhyme or the you know, it's like no matter rain, sleet, the snow, a sweet cheat tails choking like I'm spree well. Like you know, it's like no matter the, the 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 conditions, I am valuable. I don't need to be subject to nothing, and I'm, I'm that's part of my work with brothers to say the quality of your life is the quality of your relationships is dependent upon the quality of your relationship, your relationship with God, your relationship with other people, and your relationship with yourself physically and mentally. If one of those things are off, everything's going to be off. You can have a great relationship. You don't take care of your body. You're not going to be here long. You could take care of your body, don't have good relationships. But then, then again, all of your sense of value and stability is based on things that you could lose, mm. right? <laughs> so, oh, shoot, it's money. Or shoot, I have the greatest wife in the world. Or shoot, I have the greatest kids in the world. Or I have the greatest job. If, you could, if, if it's subject to that, you'll always be on a treadmill because you could lose it, which means that your peace could be lost, could be lost. Mm. And so that's why I say it's those three areas. This is why I think I love that you guys talk about comprehensive manhood, growth. You talk about the, these areas of wellness, wealth, and because it's like it's holistic and you can't just do one. You cannot. You can't just do one. You know what I'm saying? It's like, if I'm not healthy, I will feel depressed. Think about the depression. It's like, it's not even just, I always say that, man, like everybody's been in that period, man, of like you eat. It's almost like that, like the people call it like the the the, the, the post coitus clarity or the, yeah. the post. It's like you sit back like, was that necessary? Right, right, like, right, 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 right. <laughs> you know, that it's I really the same need thing, to do you, that. You know, brother, man, I'm a I'm a believing cheat day, man. Ever since I competed, Monday through Friday, I eat clean, like clean, no fried, no nothing, blah blah blah. Friday at five to Sunday at eleven fifty nine, I eat whatever I want, right. And there's some days where I'm like, I realize if I'm really really stressed. Or something's going on, I go really ham at McDonald's, man. Like I'm like I'm sitting there, I'm having McFlurry, and I'm just looking at the the, the for no the, reason. I'm looking at the scene, the crime scene. I'm like, what are I feeling what disgusted? Are I just, and you feel horrible. But then think about the 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 the, the, the cycle. Well, you then you look yourself in the face. You're like, yeah, my face is bloated. Got my, my abs ain't dipping. Like, yep. I'm doing the shoot. I'm, I wake up in the morning. People, brothers who struggle masturbation, all that. Wake up in the morning. I don't feel like getting. I'm doing it. Now you continue to do that and you go into a circle. Now that's depression. Now that's, I don't want to get up in the morning. Now I don't want to see nobody because I don't look good. I don't feel good. I don't, then you just keep, because you don't see nobody, you feel more depressed it's because you're made to, and so that's what I'm saying that it's so important to have community of brothers to speak. But I think brothers who tell the truth, because if I'm a brother saying, yo, I wrestled through that joint, man, of like, you know, the pornography and taking, you know, um, you know, pills or da, 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 think about it. You have young kids 
having heart issues. Yeah. Brothers, young boys, because they're taking Viagra and stuff in their, in their 15, 16, 17 to perform because their natural body's not working right because of things that if somebody told them, yo, in a 13, 14, hey, in this health class, yeah, we're going to talk about all these stuff, but we're also going to talk about some other things. Use that force to your advantage. You don't want to be a brother who has to depend upon something like that. I mean, hey. the, it's, it's, it's problems out there. Yeah. And I remember I, I did not hear of anything like those supplements when I was 14, 15, 16. And the, when I did hear about the Viagra, it was always associated with old people, yeah. even the commercials for old people. Now on the commercials, they got people that look like me. I'm 34 years old. When you look at this, you can tell what is happening with the society based on how the corporations are marketing. Oh, yeah. So the fact that they are marketing this product to us, it means that we have a serious problem with this. But I'm glad that you acknowledge that is deeper than just your body part not working. Ooh. It's very psychological. It's very, you know, uh, based on your, your, your grooming and kind of how you've been conditioned, of mm. how you've been conditioned to see value in yourself. Yeah. And, so, and I also want to add this, too, because you said something that was powerful, man, because I think a lot of brothers can do this. I think all of us can relate that at some point you probably fell into it, even if it was for a short amount of time, mm -hmm. when you're just not happy with yourself, mm -hmm. when you're not happy with where you are, mm -hmm. and you just go into a hole. Actually, we had a brother on a, on a platform um, where we interviewed on our other podcast. He actually had a statement said, he said, when you're down, the worst thing you can do is not be around. Oh, that's good. Oh, yeah, yeah, because he yeah, said, yeah. like, because you, you got to really tap deeply into your circle mm -hmm. at that point. When you're da you down, deeply tap into the men around you mm -hmm. so you can get a source of strength mm -hmm. and really tap. And if you around some good guys, they're going to know some shit is off and they're going to they, they gonna give you a prescription. Like, yo, hey, listen, you need to do, you need to do this shit. Mm -hmm. Hey, look, I could tell some shit not right. You need to be on this. Mm -hmm. And that's really what you got to really, you know, uh, make priority when you fall into that space, which I think is very normal. For I, I don't think it's good, yeah. but life, like you said, life happens. Yeah. And I want to ask about this too, because just transitioning a little bit, I think another big inspiration mm -hmm. for this platform and what media is also doing with it's an onslaught of it pushing this sex mm. on us, obviously over sexualizing us and causing these issues. And it's also to the men another agenda to just feminize us mm. a bit, right? Mm. To really just soften us. Mm. And I, I wanna know with your, your thoughts on this, mm -hmm. because like, how do you see? this affecting us mm -hmm. like how do you see that the that agenda how is it impacting us men as a whole i want to know your, hear your thoughts on that yeah man i and i always i kind of lead this conversation with a lot of compassion you know because i think a lot of the things that a lot of brothers and sisters are dealing with they didn't choose you don't choose your parents you don't choose the context in which you come into this world but i i think anyone who is any you don't have to be a scholar of history. You just have to be somebody who has access to Google <laughs> and can look up. Um, you know, uh, I, I like to call it genius evil. There's a pattern to evil um, throughout history. And what you've seen, even to the point that we're talking about uh, marketers playing on your insecurities, they've been doing that for women for a while. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, think about, you know, the body or you want to look like this or exploiting some of the things. Now, now we've gotten everybody is getting uh, injects, Botox, all that. Now it's like mass market. And before that, it was just makeup. Exactly. Makeup to make you look, it, quote unquote, fuckable, really. It, is what, like, that's, <laughs> no, no, that's what makeup is. It, 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 it makes, it yeah. sexualizes the woman. Exactly. Yeah. And so it's like, it's like water. It'll take up whatever space you give it. Exactly. And so it's creeped. Right. And so obviously it's not a surprise to see brothers and their insecurities being exploited for, 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 for gain. I think similarly, there's this this evil, um, because I think all societies and, and and communities of people over history have recognized the power of the family. You know, even from the Bible, they talk about the house of Israel. They used to call the house of Israel in the Bible. You see, in the Old Testament and the Hebrew it means the family of Israel, right? Meaning that God, the Father, Son, the family is is the bedrock of human relationships and community and intimacy. And when the, 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 the family was being destabilized, the black family in particular in the United States was being destabilized, they recognized the power of separating that man from the family. The impact of that is that, have you ever seen children 
Right. Yeah, matter of fact, you ever been to the Jamaican spot? <laughs> like anybody went to like Caribbean store? Blah, blah, blah. All, the, all the time. Yo, right, and just went to you one. notice, you know, if you're around people who are speaking with an accent, you ain't even trying, but you naturally, you're, this humanity, you start picking up an accent yeah. just because you were around. Yeah, all right. <laughs> you're like, yeah, I'm not, 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 you got yeah, rice and peas. You got rice and peas. You know what I'm saying? They'd be like, yeah. sure, you know what I mean? Like, right. it, it, but it's, it's hard coded in us to mirror people, right? Based mm -hmm. on our surroundings. You see every species where that, that, that child is mirroring what they see. We know a child speaks quick, more quickly if they have older siblings. Because siblings around speaking, that child is going to speak quicker than that other child did. If you have this context where you attack and you pull that central figure out of that home, we know the statistics that over 80% of the brothers and sisters that, we, that, that are coming up, that major figure of authority, protection, provision is a woman. <laughs> and so as a child, male or female, there's an impact on that. If you don't have the, the at least what's in there, what's instituted for um, that God instituted to have a man and a woman. I think that plays in a, of a role. I think there's all the environmental roles, which I think even cross cuts beyond um, just the, the, the African American diaspora and the Black diaspora. Which is like even from the man. I was at you know I'm I'm big into health and all that stuff like that. Man, I can't find any any dang there protein product unless I shout out to the Blue Bonnet. They need to sponsor this, <laughs> right? Yeah. That don't got soy in it. That don't got sucralose in it, right? You people have checked enough research that shows how much the food often are blockers, chemical warfare, chemical warfare. And so their, their kids coming up where, you know, like, it's just like, it's not something they contributed to. It was also some of the food and the diet that you're taking in that's inter impacting the kids. But I, I, I know exactly what you're talking about, right? There's this view to say, there's, there, you, know, you know, if these men are not taking their roles or if these, if these men are confused, I, I actually believe that it's by design, right? And I think to some degree, um, you're already sitting in a society that's questioning even the existence of gender. Oh, yeah. Heavily. Right. right? And think about it. Here's where it's coming from. This is where the compassion comes from. We were all made to know, to have an identity, to know who we are, to feel confident in something that gives us value. The challenge is that we all, we search for it in all the wrong places, right? And so we search for value in all of these things that we can lose, all these things that can change. And so when somebody does not have God or does not have that as their value, I'm going to put it on my sex. I'm going to put it on my gender. I'm going to put it on these things. Yes, that's part of how we were made, but that's not everything. And so to the extent that you'll issue even things that are true because you, you need that feeling. And so I think you have this dynamic where it's like, okay, so we don't have, believe in male or we don't even believe in female. On top of that, people are confused because the world has fallen, existence has fallen. The world isn't the way God designed it to be. And people are confused and they're trying to find truth. And if nobody's giving the truth, well, the people who are the bad actors in this who say, you know, we want to destabilize this community, then we're going to target that and we're going to, we're going to, we're going to actually push against um, their men taking on the role of being the protectors of this community, being there in the families, taking care of them. And it leaves the community vulnerable. And it, moves, it leaves it vulnerable. And so, I think it's, it's tough. Somehow gender is no longer scientific, it's all political. Yeah. And um, I was watching a show a couple months ago, White Lotus. Mm -hmm. I think this is a great show on HBO just because it really captures like the status of the world in terms of like these characters. It's like, mm -hmm. these are real, like I'm like, this is a real character. Mm -hmm. Like I've met this person in real mm -hmm. life, these characters, they do so well. Mm -hmm. And one of uh, the premise is like, you know, you got these very wealthy families on vacation. Mm -hmm. Now one of the families that came out there was a family of three. Mm -hmm. It was the granddad, the father and the son. Mm -hmm. And the son had a serious issue in the relationship dynamic between his, with his father and his grandfather mm. because of their perspective on women mm -hmm. and how they went about dealing with women. Mm -hmm. And based on, you know, whatever his experience was, whatever the social media, whatever, mm -hmm. the, you know, he, he kind of came up, he thought that because his dad and granddad operated in this way, they had, they were like character, they had character flaws, mm -hmm. right? So he actually despised mm -hmm. spending time with them. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious, do you have men that have been so conditioned by the feminist movement and mm -hmm. social media and all these factors that they end up pretty much being very uncomfortable with the traditional man? And have they come around? Do you have, have you had a person that came around and was like, oh, my God, I realized I hated guys. Yeah. And I realized how I'm in the wrong and I want to come back around to 
Yeah, man. If and this is why I say you you can't have a good faith conversation unless all of us are willing to confront uncomfortable truth. Mm. If we're honest, all of us have issues. I have two parents um, that stay together. I saw a lot of things. I'm not saying it was perfect by any means, but I know that there's a gift. There's a gift and a curse of what I saw. Right. The reality is often it starts with us. And yes, there are countless of brothers because of feelings of rejection and abandonment whether they acknowledge it or not, which is an internalized resentment towards that figure. Mm. How we interact with our parents informs how we interact with God. How we see God is how it impacts how we see our parents, which is why the commandments like respect your father and mother. There's no conditions in that because there are times when you'd be disappointed in what God has done and what he's allowed and what you've had in your life. But do I still revere God for who he is? There's a, there's a dynamic where because of this pain, whether it was maybe because I, that I generally did not show up as the traditional man, but my father, it seemed like he didn't, every, every brother wants to know that his father's pleased with him. Mm. Jesus too, I'm, I'm, you're in my son in whom I'm well pleased. And so to believe that even for example, talking about gender or talking about your, how you show up um, in terms of being a, a feminine or just like that number one, father, did you want me? Are you pleased with me? Are you proud of me? That's one piece of it. Number two, you have this dynamic that I now also am taking on the pain of the one who is here. So because she was the one who took care of me and protected me and provided for me and actually gave me a sense of validation, I'm internalizing her resentment towards you. Wow. So because naturally I'm called to be a protector of my wife I somehow, unconsciously, many brothers become son husbands. And so on behalf of protecting my mother, I hate you, right? And so then what, I, what seems or what looks like me standing for women is a lot easier. We said this on, I said this on the tour so consistently. So there's many brothers who find it a lot easier to throw mud on men because it's a lot cleaner to do that. That's what I'm seeing. But it's a lot more complicated to then show the ways in which your mother's unhealthiness impacted you because it feels like I'm ungrateful because she was the one who was there. So I'd rather not even talk about it at all. So there's brothers who no matter what the issue is, they blaming the men, they talking about them like this dude, da, 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 da. I think if we're honest, for many of them, it starts with their own feeling of rejection and resentment towards that man. And that, the way God has designed us as human beings, that forms how you view other men deeply. It forms how you build relationships with other men. For example, I was an only son, meaning that I, don't, I have great brothers, man. I have close friends. That's a gift. But I could be a loner because my situation formed the fact that I didn't necessarily form the skills early on to be like, oh, yo, we went out. When I was in college, it was like, yo, where we going? I was like, I go to them. I go to move by myself because I'm so used to that. So if you're so used to having this internalized resentment or feeling abandoned and feeling this, and then the woman feeling that resentment, having issues, if let's say her, the father's living and she's unconsciously saying this, or you see her crying in the corner if she's trying to protect the honor of the, of the dad who's not there, you're going to feel mad on her behalf. So every brother's good. Every man gets those strays, whether you are conscious of it or not. So, you know, I think that's, you know, that's it's true. so crazy because I, I, we just had a guess. Shout out to the femininity, fem, femininity doctor. She actually explained, mm. which I, I never heard articulated until she said it. She said that a woman's relationship with her father affects her relationship with God. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So what I'm seeing is you're now even explaining a man's relationship with his father can affect his relationship with men. Oh, yeah. So what it really seems like. The, pa the relationship a child ha has with their parents is like the foundation mm -hmm. of all relationships. Mm -hmm. And based upon the health of the relationship you have with your parents, mm -hmm. that will pretty much set the standard and the tone for the health of the relationships you'll have elsewhere. Brother, you, you, that's the word. Because it all, remember I said that, we talked about marriage, you know, we all love, we love these conversations because we care about our people and recognize the importance of marriage. I said, marriage is just, the, it's a play. Mm. It's a play of, the, of eternity, of the relationship between God and his people. We're just reenacting that play. The relationship of, that, of parents to children is reenacting the play of our relationship of God to us. If that relationship is foundational, based on that relationship, it, sh it affects how we show up with everybody, right? 
If I'm sat with God, think about it. They say like, hey, by your love for one another, then you'll know you're my disciples. So, which means that you're saying that based on my love for people, it shows whether or not I'm in, I have a great relationship with you. If I really love God, then it's going to impact how I interact with my brother. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You got to yes. go back to the source. You got to go back to the source. So to your point, a, a, a word, right? It, and we don't like that, right? Because the thing of all as humans, you don't feel like you want to feel like anything impacts you like that. You're like, nah, nah, I'm above all that. Nah, 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 that ain't, you know, nah, nah, I'm good. I'm self-made. Truth. That's been the, the theme. Truth. Let's, let's be honest. It does, right? You know, because in that quiet time with that, if you really sit and think long enough to let that bone set, you recognize, ah, I do feel rejected. The reason why I work so hard is because I want to show him, yeah, you know I mean, that, that, that I am worthy, that I'm worth it. I want him to say, like, good job. I want him to say good game. You know, there's an amazing clip Kobe Bryant had, man. Kobe Bryant talked about like how he sucked. <laughs> I think he may probably saw this stuff. He's like, I suck, man. You know, I was on the bench. I was riding it hard. And one day my dad told me, and he ended the at the summer league, he was just like, No matter how, no matter how many points you score, I'm always gonna be proud of you. He said, everything for me changed after that. He said, I worked so hard because I knew that no matter what, I already had the approval of him. And he said, I never was the same. That mom became in. Similarly, there's a lot of brothers, and Jave talks about this, man. There's a lot of brothers who are working from the, uh, the, 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 the gap or the hunger for somebody to say good job. Mm. Right? And good job is those likes. Good job is, man, like, yo, yo, you that man. Good job. Yeah. But ultimately, we only want to hear from one. Every brother and every sister knows this man, if you have a love or not. You have a somebody you dreamed with. I call like your, your Vandy from Last Dragon. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, like if the of another sister they tell you you're not really feeling, you know what I'm saying? It's kind of like, oh man, you look nice. You're like, yeah, cool, cool, cool. But I want her to say it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's kind of the similar view of like, you know what I mean, like, yeah, like the world is all cool, but I want dad to say it. Because it's like, yeah, good job. And I think. There are a lot of brothers who are working out of the lack of getting that good job. And I think that's what drives a lot of stuff. Wow. And first off, you're a player. You bring up the last dragon. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey. <laughs> Bruce Leroy, player. good brother. That's a mandatory watch. That's a mandatory watch. <laughs> oh, mandatory. For every man out here. Easy, Damn, man. Lord, you don't run up an hour on us quick, man. Hey, man and you, that last point that you was making about the, the relationship that men have with their father and then, you know, looking to protect the only person that was actually around. And that's what, I mean, I just see so much of that. So I'm really glad you touched on that because I think it's men that are now creating these spaces, but I still think there's so many men who are afraid mm-hmm. to penetrate these spaces and get themselves involved in these spaces because they don't have a healthy relationship with other strong men. Yeah. And GS Youngblood talks about that. He says, if you want to see a weak man exposed, you put him around the most beautiful women or you put him around the most strong men. Ooh, and the way that they're going to respond is out of fear and frustration and it's going to be from this attack attack mode you know what i mean and i I think that you know men really do like you said they have to look back and see evaluate the things that affected them so they'll be able to put themselves address those things put themselves in better position um to to get the healing that they need yo i I gotta say this really quickly man you made this point i don't want to zoom past it you talked about how when you you know like you know like uh, it's dangerous when you isolate like you know you have to have men around when you're down yeah part of that is because you feel like you need to have it together to be in their presence right but think about it it's common if i feel like you've heard people even back in the day whether it was faith or not to be like yeah, I can't go to church, but I gotta get, get my life together. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You gotta show up. Yeah, gotta first. Gotta show, you know, so it, it, you know, sometimes it's the fear of rejection. Yeah. The same rejection and abandonment you felt that if I tell you the things I'm messing with, you're not gonna say I don't measure up. So even when I'm struggling, I gotta have stuff enough together to present it to you, because you're not you're gonna say I'm less of a man. Right, which is why I'm still trying to prove to the world, to my dad, to everybody that I got enough together. And I think the point is like, to your point, you do need to, that's why you need brothers that you trust. They all say like, if you have three relationships, uh, at the end of your life, you, you, you die rich. You need to have, make, have settled matters. These are three guys that these are not, this is not library car renewals. This is not every week I'm checking out the, my stock charts and being like, I said up and down. We, we good, you're my guys. And I'm just gonna invest. Three guys. Three guys. I call three no questions asked. No mm-hmm. questions asked, meaning like three no questions asked relationship, every brother needs it. Meaning that in your mind, you have the explicit joint. If I call you, I can call you no questions asked. 
I say, I need you to show up here now. And you would show up, no questions asked. I don't need to tell you why. Every brother should be working towards that in their life to have that type of relationship. You don't have to have it today, but you should have an explicit conversation to say like, I, hey, I, I, I want to be that for you. You be that for me. No questions asked. Not saying that people may never use it in their lifetime. They may never use that bad signal. But to know that I got that, if you have that, you have walked through this life wealthy. And I think if brothers have that, that's a place of safety. Again, not every brother, you know your friends, not everybody can handle everything. You're right. like, ah, if I ask him this, I know what he's about to say. I know but you need to have a brother where you're like, yo, yo, I have a, I have some more game, man. I, I'm part of prayer groups. Some of them I lead. Another one I'm just a part of. Brothers that are doing their thing. Jay's a part of one, man. Every Monday we lock up. Noon. Pray up. Shout my boy Tavia. A few other people, man. We lock up and we get real. And I know when things was going on with my sister, things was happening, I hit the joint, beyond call, showing up, like, let me send you something, blah, blah, blah. Just to know that I got hitters that, that are ready to care, we, ready meaning to care. that, we, like pray, that. <laughs> we pray on Monday, and you hear brothers crying about their marriage, business stuff, all that, and everybody's solid. And it's five of us max. Every Monday, we don't miss. And if we do, shoot, we looking forward to next time. The text message stay on it. But when everybody got something going on, I see a text from that joint. Oh, shoot, such and such got going on. His mom's in surgery. Boom, 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 boom. Cool. What happened? Blah, blah, blah. We have to learn. You got to build that, that muscle. But we all need it. And brothers are told a lie that you got to do it on your own. We weren't made for that, bro. We were made for each other. Mars. It was needed. It was hey. needed. The platform brothers was listen. blessed today. Uh, Some brothers got healed, bro. <laughs> got healed. That's a fact. That's I'm a about fact. to cry right now, goddamn hey, it! Man. <laughs> hey man, glory to your Denzel one single stream. Man, <laughs> let, let me tell you, Lawrence. Thank you so much for coming up on here and blessing oh, us with this you. game, with your presence. Thank you. And please bless the people with your contact information so they can figure out how to get more of this game from you. Oh, most definitely, man. Um, Lawrence Aja, you can find me on uh, on the gram, um, A D J A H underscore L Aja underscore L, um, and Instagram. Okay, you can also man. find my website, lawrenceaja.com, L A W R E N C E, A as an Apple, D as in David, J as in Jack, A as an Apple, H as in Hello, dot com. Or you can even text me, 212-518-3324. No, that's not a community number. That's not a mass text. That's actually a direct line. Um, and it, it gives me, I think it keeps me humble in the work of serving people. Um, and that's a way that you can reach out. There's a couple things, obviously, to Just Heal Bro Tour. Brothers, this is not one of those just we're just here to kumbaya. It's actually practical tools. And some of this from Philly, we actually had job fairs at the same time, right? Lock you up with local uh, local resources, but you actually get practical tools. How to actually fit in your gym stuff. What does that look like? How do you manage your relationships? How do you get your core when you're busy? How do you manage your, 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 your what does it look like to, uh, to evaluate a counselor? And if you don't have a counselor, I could be a part of a cohort in the meantime of brothers locally that we're putting brothers in to be locked in with that. Just heal bro, so be a part of that. Uh, number two, Really excited about this thing, man. Um, I did a full audiobook of the Bible. Here's why this is important, man. Um, I did it in the NIV, and the reason why, I got a vision for it two years ago because I was helping a brother who's kind of like, yo. And the best way I could describe it is just like, I feel like I've built my whole life on a movie I haven't watched in its entirety. You know what I mean? I remember when people were watching Power and Game of Thrones. I, ain't, I was behind. I'm like, I, ain't, I can't hop in this thing, but you can only be so brolic about what you're saying right. if I ain't watched an entire series. And I think what's also difficult is for many people they struggle with, yo, shoot, everybody had that big Bible, that King James on the joint, but it's like, I don't talk like that. I don't know what they saying. Yo, thou art, <laughs> thou art, or thou shall. You know what I'm saying? And so did it in the NIV in a language and accessible way that it's a brother's voice. And James O. Jones was the last brother that kind of really did it. He did it with the um, uh, King James. So I did the entire Bible. It's that. coming out April 11th um, and 23. And so for you, everybody wants to do it once in their lifetime. I did a poll of it over the years. Um, check that out. And then lastly, I have a vision um, of brothers and sisters having the relationships that they need the most, no matter where they live. Um, and my belief is that um, even these conversations is helpful. That number one, um, I believe that brothers and sisters that are married, they need other married couples that look like them that believe the same thing. And so watch God work the work that we're doing. We're getting married couples together all over, all over the world, already gathering over dinners and stuff to say, you know what? That pandemic showed me, yo, who are my kids playing with? I need to know... <laughs> I need to be a part of some other groups of families who are living together intentionally and we're raising our kids together. Number two, just because you're single don't mean, or if just because you're not in a church, it doesn't mean that you can't be deliberate about your faith. 
I don't know your story about why you don't are not pursuing that. But if you're a faith, there's a growing movement of people who want to be intentional and want to be in small groups and be intentional about that. So watch God work. Go to watchgodwork.co. You can sign up as well. But again, I'm so thankful to be on this platform. Um, I said I peeped them two years ago, and, and um, look, Providence, God knew, um, and God did. And so I'm thankful uh, to be here, to be able to be in this conversation. I pray this is not the God end. did. Yeah. Hey, listen, one of the first guests to put out that phone number, too. Ladies, oh, yeah. he's single. It's <laughs> <laughs> a multi-purpose number, guy. Hey, but you better make sure you spiritually grounded before you hit my man's up, though. <laughs> none of that ratchet stuff, all right? right. None, none, of that, none of them unhealed. Women with them with them daddy issues that we was talking about a little bit earlier. <laughs> Brother, that's stray. You see, I'm I'm, I'm Mayweather, Philly shoulder rolling around. <laughs> but listen, thank you, brother, again for coming up oh, on man, here. Love, respect. and thank y'all for tuning into another episode of Harley Initiated. Yeah, yeah. We are out.